Now this is kind of tricky. He can get on the 101 south. He cannot get on the 101 north from this uh, particular area here. He'd have to go around the block. But uh, he's just now coming up on very, very slow traffic. So let's see what he does here. Very slow traffic. He's just come up on traffic that is now stopped at the intersection of uh, Santa Monica Boulevard and the Santa Monica Boulevard North 101 off-ramp. So uh, just a lot of congestion there. They're going to spin him. They're going to spin him. There we go. Uh-oh, he's going to hit that. He's going to hit that car. Uh-oh, careful. Guy on the bike. Guy on the bike. Careful, careful. Okay, now turning eastbound. Eastbound. My goodness. Okay, look at that. Wow. Eastbound Santa Monica Boulevard, so he just made the U-turn after uh, getting spun and colliding with a secondary vehicle here. Eastbound on Santa Monica Boulevard, he's going to be coming up on Normandy here shortly. Normandy, guys. And he's still being followed in close proximity by that one motor cop who's able to maneuver and stay up on him here. So there we go. Southbound into the neighborhood. Southbound into the neighborhood. Unless he knows this, uh, the ins and outs here, and I doubt he does, but... But unless he knows the ins and outs here, he could uh, get himself into a pickle uh, in terms of uh, there's a couple of uh, cul-de-sacs that he could get trapped in. But uh, southbound, southbound on Ardmore, he's got, uh, he's got to make a decision left or right uh, here in about two houses worth. Uh, and he's going to make the right-hand turn. He's going to make the right-hand turn, and he's going to be ending up uh, coming back northbound over towards Santa Monica Boulevard again. So uh, let's watch this guy. This guy is just driving like a nut job here. Okay, there's a secondary cop car coming up on him, and he, uh-oh, okay. Head, head on, head on, head on, head on, slow, okay. Woo! Wow, look at that. Look at that. Did they, did they, okay, so they touched. Okay, he's going to put himself in a cul-de-sac. He's going to put himself in the cul-de-sac. Just like I said, just like I said, he's in a cul-de-sac. He's going to have to spin around or foot bail or something. Darn it. Okay, we got a bunch of trees here. So let's see what he does. Uh, they're blocking. Okay, is he going to try? Woo, he got through. He got through. Okay, another cop there. Another cop at the entrance of the cul-de-sac here. They're going to let him through. Oh, my gosh. Wow, look at that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, now back eastbound through the neighborhood here. We do have one unmarked chasing after him and several other vehicles running parallel streets. This guy's going northbound back over towards Santa Monica Boulevard now. This is just an unbelievable pursuit here. High speeds, residential areas here. Cross traffic coming up, cross traffic coming up. Okay, slower. Here we go, here we go. Let's see what he does at Santa Monica Boulevard. He's setting up for the left turn westbound. Setting up for the left turn westbound on Santa Monica Boulevard here, guys. Okay, a couple of unmarked uh, behind him, CHP behind them, at least two units, and uh, motorcycle as well. He'll be coming up on uh, Hobart, and he's going to go through the intersection. We've got pedestrians. We've got pedestrians here. Now he's coming up on the 101 freeway, right where we were before, where that uh, slower traffic was uh, at the exit for Santa Monica Boulevard here. And he's going to take the side street. He's going to take the side street. And that is going to be Serrano, North Serrano Avenue here. So he's going to be coming up Serrano Avenue and uh, back eastbound. So this guy's just kind of running circles. I don't get the sense that he actually knows where he is or exactly what he's doing. He's just doing whatever he can to uh, not get caught here. So eastbound, I think that's going to be Lexington. Eastbound on Lexington, and he's going to make a right turn or a left turn or go straight. If he turns right, he's going to be back down to Santa Monica Boulevard. If he goes straight, he's got, okay, right turn. Santa Monica Boulevard is where he's headed in about one block here, and that's going to be Hobart. He's right on Hobart, right next to an elementary. He's going to be right uh, next to an elementary, sc elementary school here. But, uh, okay, now's a chance to pit him. Nope. Hang on a second here. I'm getting some info, guys. Okay, we're eastbound now. Eastbound Santa Monica Boulevard here. He's coming up on slower traffic ahead. Let's see what he does. He's, tr he's trying to maneuver to get around this stop traffic. He's going to go, oh, my gosh, into oncoming traffic here. Cross traffic, cross traffic. Here we go. Southbound, southbound, that's going to be Normandy. Normandy southbound from Santa Monica Boulevard is where we are here. Uh, it's only one lane in either direction. He's going to go into the opposing lanes of traffic here. Look at this guy. Oh, my gosh. Very dangerous. High speeds. Only one lane of traffic north, only one lane of traffic south. Some of the cars that uh, are ahead of him are actually seeing what's coming up in their rear view, and they're uh, making efforts to pull over to the right here. But look at this guy moving into oncoming lanes of traffic, swerving in and out. He, if he stays on uh, Normandy here, he's going to be able to get right underneath the 101 freeway, or he can get on the 101 freeway right there. No, so he doesn't choose to get on the 101 freeway. There's his opportunity there that uh, uh, just... Uh,
went uh, missed here. But uh, coming up, should be coming up on Melrose. Melrose here. Um, southbound on Normandy coming up on Melrose. It looks like he's geared up for a left turn here, but he's going to go around those guys. And let's see what he does through the intersection. And a left turn. A left turn eastbound. Left turn eastbound. That's going to put him in position to get on the 101 freeway southbound if he wants to. There you go. Okay, the right turn. There it is. The 101 freeway southbound, guys. 101 freeway southbound right here at Melrose. And so he's kind of making uh, circles around the immediate vicinity here. We're just now getting on the freeway, and there is a lot of slow traffic, a lot of slow traffic that he's going to have to negotiate. And I don't know that he's going to be able to do that all that well because I'm just looking ahead over towards downtown, and there is a steady stream of slow traffic from this point all the way in towards downtown. So he's going to be hugging the shoulder. He probably will actually end up by getting off the freeway here. So let's see what he does. Vermont is coming up next. And so if he stays on the freeway, he can, uh, oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, so he's squeezing through some of these slower moving cars. There is just a lot of slow traffic on this stretch of the freeway here. So this guy is just uh, doing what he can. And maybe that's part of his strategy here. Maybe uh find a couple of gaps to, to wiggle through and uh, evade the cops in that way, but uh, that's just not going to happen here. We have uh, uh, Sky 5 HD overhead. We are the only news helicopter covering this uh, police pursuit here, as well as Sheriff's 7. They've uh, been on this for a little bit here. Now we're coming southbound. Southbound. There he goes, coming out. Okay, southbound on the 101 freeway past Vermont, and he is just uh, trying to negotiate through a lot of slower traffic here, just a lot of slower traffic. Let's see what he does here, and uh, yeah, he's able to make it around that big rig. Some of the cars are pulling over to the right, some cars are pulling over to the left. Some people just have no idea what's going on, but look at him. He's just kind of wiggling through straddling lanes uh, on the southbound side of the 101. All things considered, he's actually getting through, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty well, uh, albeit uh, having to drive a little bit uh, crazy to do it, but there you go. Southbound 101 from Vermont. Silver Lake Boulevard is going to be next, and so that's going to be his next opportunity to get off the freeway. Otherwise, he's going to be dealing with a lot of this slow traffic uh, from this point all the way down to the four-level interchange here. So let's see what he does here. So southbound side of the one southbound side of the 101 freeway here, and uh, it looks like he's just kind of weaving in, weaving out of traffic. Hey, guys, uh, just a heads up, Jen. We're going to have company here in a minute. Uh, okay, where are we now? Where are we now? Okay, I've got him. TV5's overhead. Okay, there he is. Okay, just kind of uh, straddling that middle lane of traffic there, southbound side of the 101, uh, just coming up now on uh, Silver Lake Boulevard here shortly, where he is going to have the option, of course, of getting off or staying on the freeway. Let's see what he does. If he wants to get off on Silver Lake, he's going to have to move to the right, and in fact, it looks like he's moving over to the HOV lane, so moving to the left. So he's going to pass up his opportunity to get off on Silver Lake Boulevard at least, and uh, that's going to push him down towards like Benton Way, uh, Glendale Boulevard, Alvarado, those uh, those streets over there here. So it looks like he's going to commit himself to the 101 freeway and just uh, kind of stay weaving in and out of traffic there. So number one lane, he's in uh, he's being followed in close proximity. I believe that's going to be the San Gabriel Police Department uh, cruiser still on scene here. I uh, understood that they might at some point request the CHP uh, to come in and take over the pursuit. That has not happened yet. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to mobilize uh, the CHP once they are called in, but we do know that they are well aware of what's going on. The CHP uh, has an office, in fact, right there at uh, right there at the 101 at Vermont here, so they are well equipped and uh, well aware of what's going on here. Southbound side of the 101 freeway is where we are is where we are at here, and uh, we're going to be coming up on um, Benton Way here shortly, and uh, just in the number one lane of traffic, so uh, they'll kind of follow this through and see if he makes his way down in towards downtown. Of course, this pursuit started uh, somewhere in the San Gabriel Valley. Uh, we presume that they attempted to stop uh, this person here. We don't know how many people are actually in the vehicle at this point, but uh, at any rate, okay, uh, five's at uh, 1,005, 1,006 uh, and above. All right, uh, we have other, other ships coming in, other ships coming in here. So southbound side of the 101 freeway here. We're only about, uh, well, as the crow flies, maybe a couple of miles from the four-level interchange. So, oh, my goodness, what in the world? Look at this guy just swerving in and out. Uh, who knows what this guy uh, is really running, uh, why this guy is really Oh, my gosh, there's a collision right there. 
So now this guy is really starting to drive super erratically to the point where he's just kind of swerving in and out. He's hitting other cars. Uh, we saw him hit uh, another vehicle out on surface streets here. And so now you can see the results of uh, him just driving recklessly, uh, just driving recklessly and without any real uh, direction or aim here. So uh, we'll see what he does here. He's just trying to get, oh my, God. okay. He is intentionally sideswiping some of these other cars. He's He's hitting these other cars on purpose, and so maybe he's just mad that that person didn't get out of the way fast enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, he just uh, looked like he intentionally sideswiped that car. It just the guy didn't get out of uh, out of his way fast enough, so he made that move to the right and uh, just kind of swerved right into him, and then uh, came back into the number one lane here. So, ah, uh, wow, look at this southbound side of the 101 freeway. We'll be coming up on the Echo Park area here. We can't we can't enter the airspace. We can't. Uh, okay, guys. Hey, just heads up, guys. Heads up, Jen. Uh, LA, uh, the LAX control tower is not letting any TV helicopters uh, into the airspace. So, uh, we'll do the best we can. Oh, you came in broken. Uh, can you text it to me, Jen? Can you text it? Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. Man, this guy's ripping. Okay. Okay, southbound, southbound on the 110 freeway, coming up on, uh, let's see, Redondo Beach Boulevard here, Redondo Beach Boulevard, and uh, wow, this guy is really, really moving here, 100 miles an hour plus on this pursuit here. So southbound on the 110 freeway, he's coming through Gardena on the right, he's coming through Compton on the left, southbound on the 110 freeway, he'll be approaching the 91 freeway here shortly, but uh, look at that, we're doing our best to keep up with him on the street that he is on right now, and he's going at a good uh, rate of speed. Uh, we saw him get off the freeway. There we have, uh, I believe, is that the uh, CHP chopper in the shot there, officer? Um, that might be one. I can't see it very well from, uh, I believe that is his, I believe that is our. That is, so you guys are very close to what's going on. You know exactly where he's going. And now it looks like he's approached. Uh, for highway violence against a patrol vehicle, um, at that point they requested CHP to take over. Um, CHP uh, did take over, and that's where we're in right now in pursuit of this vehicle. So that's all the details that we have. Uh, for, for a while, uh, we saw uh, uh, one of the officers uh, fairly up close, West closer than up. we typically see the vehicles uh, on this car, uh, but they have backed off. Any particular reason on that? Well, it, it could be uh, several different reasons, uh, wow. trying to get closer to see how many occupants, wow. to try and confirm how many occupants we might have in the vehicle. Um, at this point, Coming I believe on it's zone. only uh, one occupant, uh, but obviously we won't be able to confirm that until this pursuit is over and we can actually clear the vehicle. The air traffic control tower at uh, L.A. would not let us follow this guy along the 110 freeway, so we had to go the long way around. And uh, But at any rate, we were able to catch up with him over in uh, the Hawthorne area here. But uh, again, there is going to be the CHP helicopter that that is in very close proximity to him. Northbound side of the 110 freeway, he's just crossed under the 405 and will be fast approaching the 91, the 91 freeway here. Of course, he'll have the option of uh, staying on the 91, staying on the 110 freeway, going through Gardena and Compton up towards Hawthorne. But uh, again, remember, this pursuit started somewhere out in the San Gabriel Valley here, so. Radically, in fact, I'll pull the speed off here in a second so you can see. We're gonna go in digitally, and you can see you've got very heavy tint on those passenger windows, even on the top window. We can get closer than anybody can with our cameras here in Los Angeles. Angels, and we can see exactly, we can get a look at that driver, see if we can get any type of make or, uh, or a description on it, but a lot of dark tint on that vehicle, and that's that's exactly why that's illegal, because we can't really, uh, law enforcement can't see inside, can't see who the suspect is. We're going to try to push a little bit forward here as we cross right over the 405 freeway. We've crossed under that. We're approaching the 91 uh, interchange here, but uh, again, really dark. We we'll, we'll, can't really see in there, so we're going to pull back out. And just too dark to see through that tent. Well, sometimes it's difficult for them, especially with tinted windows like that, to know if there's one, two, multiple yeah. people in this vehicle. Uh, he's slowing down significantly, down to about 40 miles an hour, 48, 49 miles an hour. Is that because he's coming into traffic or just now? Okay, 91 freeway, 91 freeway. I've got you. Thank you. Okay. 
Is he exiting on maybe main? He just took the main street off ramp here loose. Uh, he just basically transitioned from the northbound side of the 110 freeway over to the east 91, east 91, and you just saw him make that hairpin turn. He just got off uh, on Av our main or Avalon, and uh, basically he's back onto the eastbound 91, 91 freeway again. So it looks like these kind of attempts to uh, to, to shake uh, the, the, the CHP, uh, you know, from being so close to him, essentially, uh, definitely not going to work. I mean, we have a couple of airships above. Wow, look at that. He just collided with the CHP officer there. That is not going to go well for this guy. That is not going to go well. You know, that uh, could potentially be perceived as assault with a deadly weapon uh, against a police officer here. So uh, that might change the way uh, they uh, treat this guy, the way they react to this guy, if and when uh, this uh, thing does stop. So we'll kind of watch and uh, see what that was a major that was a major incident right there. So that could change the uh, the flow, the course of, uh, of how this pursuit ends. So uh, we are traveling Compton now, Compton, eastbound side of the 91 freeway coming through Compton. We'll be coming up on, uh, say, Alameda here in just about a mile, mile and a half, free, uh, mile and a half or so. Beyond the Compton area, you got the 710 freeway at North Long Beach, but you just saw that he collided uh, with a CHP officer on the freeway at freeway speeds very dangerously. We saw that uh, him colliding uh, intentionally with other uh, vehicles along the 101 and the 110 freeway. So this guy showing uh, no regard for anything uh, except, uh, you know, his... Uh, his uh, hope to get away from this all, uh, but uh, that's not going to happen here. We have several layers of police helicopters. We have, uh, let's widen out the shot just for a second here, just to give you an idea how many units of the CHP are now following this. Guys, this is not going to end nice for this guy unless he gives up peacefully here, but look at how many units are behind this guy on the eastbound side of the 91 freeway. Again, we'll be coming up on Alameda. Beyond Alameda, we'll be coming up over towards the 710 freeway, North Long Beach, Bellflower, beyond that. Uh, you know, if, if this guy decides to head up into, into the San Gabriel Valley, maybe he wants to take the 710 freeway north. Uh, but uh, at any rate, yeah, this guy is uh, making some very, very uh, dangerous and... Uh, very dangerous moves uh, for himself that could be perceived uh, in a manner that uh, is not uh, going to bode well for him uh, once they do get this guy stopped. So uh, this uh, is going to be a very dangerous situation not only for him, but it continues to be a very dangerous situation, obviously, for the police officers, the CHP officers that are trying to get this guy to slow down and stop. I mean, he collided with a CHP officer. Not only that, he collided intentionally with other vehicles uh, on the freeway, commuters along the 101 and the 110 uh, freeway southbound. So again, he showed Showing no regard uh, for the safety of, uh, of anyone, and all he's thinking about is uh, just uh, kind of continuing this uh, very dangerous and reckless pursuit here. So the charges against this guy are definitely starting to stack up as we cross over uh, Alameda, and uh, we'll be over towards the uh, 710 freeway in a matter of about uh, another mile, mile and a half, so we'll see what he does. But, uh, wow, you just saw that uh, wild situation here where he actually collided with a CHP officer. The number one lane of traffic, and he's going to, wow, sudden move, sudden move. Okay, you know that this guy is not afraid to crash into anyone here. So as long as it doesn't disable his car, you know that this guy will swerve and sideswipe and do whatever he has to uh, to avoid uh, being disabled and uh, being captured here by the CHP. But uh, eastbound side of the 91 freeway will be coming up on, uh, let me look down the freeway. Okay, coming up on Atlantic, uh, coming up on Cherry beyond that. We'll be coming up on Downey. Lakewood, so uh, and uh, Bellflower beyond that. So here we go, coming through North Long Beach, and uh, in another couple of miles we'll be coming through Bellflower here. So East 91 Freeway, lots of slower moving traffic, and he's kind of using that. Uh, well, I don't know if it's more or less to his advantage, but he's using that uh, slower traffic to kind of weave in and out, and he's trying to distance himself from the CHP, but the CHP is uh, definitely in very close proximity, and as I mentioned before, we have a couple of layers of helicopter that are uh, following this guy, so this guy's just not going to get away, not uh, under these circumstances here. He's just now coming up on a slower-moving box van. Uh, you know, if he wanted to, he could just move over to the right lane, and uh, that's what he's doing. Go ahead. All right, yeah, we were just going to, sorry to interrupt you there, we're going to continue to follow uh, watching uh, this vehicle in this pursuit, but we have Juan Galvan back on the line from the CHP. Uh, Juan, we, we just just saw this driver aggressively uh, ram into one of the CHP uh, vehicles. Uh, not a good idea. Absolutely. Now this is assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer. Um, that vehicle is disabled now. Uh, so the pursuit is continuing. We are eastbound uh, 91, as you mentioned. Uh, last entry I have here is approaching Atlantic. Um, so we just want to be cautious and have the public be uh, be careful while they're out there. And if this is coming into your area or into your location, uh, just try and uh, stay away. Move off to the right. Okay. 
All right, we continue to watch this vehicle. Have you ever seen a, a driver this aggressive before for this long a period of time? You know, um, each each uh, pursuit that we have, we, we treat with extreme caution. Um, there are pursuits where uh, they are like this. And, um, unfortunately, it happens during the night, and, and it doesn't get attention as it does here. But we have seen uh, rammings. We have seen uh, the suspect, suspect in pursuits uh, be very aggressive in this nature. Uh, just to let our viewers uh, to know what's going on here, how did this all start in San Gabriel? Uh, the call that we have at 1132 was from San Gabriel PD that they were in pursuit of a white Nissan SUV, which I believe is a Nissan Rogue, uh, for highway violence against a San Gabriel marked patrol vehicle. A pursuit ensued, and then at that point, we were requested to take over. We, as in CHP, were requested to take over, and that's where we currently are right now. Uh, any information on what exactly led to that incident? We don't have the exact or Just what the exact the action was that led to the uh, highway violence or what the action was. Um, however, we are pursuing uh, based on on that and now the assault on peace officer on our on our CHP officer. So just from what you've seen on air, what uh, what potential charges is he facing uh, up to this point? Well, there are there are several uh, charges. It could be felony evading as well as the assault on peace officers. And depending on what the uh, crime was against the San Gabriel PD unit as well, will we'll all be included. All right, we continue to uh, watch this again. This is a, uh, a white Nissan Rogue uh, just uh, weaving in and out of traffic, uh, reaching speeds at one point of uh, on the 105 freeway of 115 miles per hour. Uh, I don't know about you, Lou, but um, I have not seen one uh, gone this uh, that's, uh, that's gone this long and this aggressive in, uh, in, in quite some time, especially uh, in all of this uh, heavy traffic. Uh, Marcona, where exactly are we are at this point? Yeah, Glenn, welcome to the show here, eastbound side of the 91 freeway. We've just passed Lakewood Boulevard. We're coming up on Bellflower Boulevard. In fact, I think we just passed Bellflower Boulevard. And so now we are basically heading uh, through Bellflower over towards Cerritos, eastbound side of the 91 freeway over towards the 605 is where we are going now. This guy, as you've been watching, has been weaving in and out of lanes here, so with no regard for uh, other commuters on the road, and so uh, just moving at a very fast rate of speed, as fast as he can, uh, to try and evade uh, the CHP off officers, which are relatively in uh, close proximity uh, to him right now. He is in the HOV lane, and he is eastbound 91, and he's approaching the 605 freeway at this. Okay, let's see what he does here. If he stays in kind of those left lanes, he's going to be committed to the 91 freeway east, and he'll be coming through Cerritos. If he makes a swerving move to the right, and we've seen that before, he might be uh, heading over towards the 605 north or south. So let's see what he does. It looks like he's kind of locked himself into uh, the 91, and so that's going to put us... Uh, over towards Studebaker, over towards Pioneer, uh, and over towards the Cerritos area here. So crossing uh, over the 91 freeway, or crossing over the 605 freeway, I should say, eastbound side of the 91. So you saw it just on our air just a few minutes ago, and we called it. Uh, boy, oh boy, he just kind of swerved into that CHP officer, and that just changes uh, the, the flow of this pursuit here because this just elevates that to, uh, to a new level where uh, this guy uh, is essentially using uh, his vehicle as a de deadly weapon here. So that is just going to uh, not bode well for this guy as he continues this. And hopefully this ends up uh, in a peaceful way. We just don't know uh, based on what we've uh, witnessed uh, to this point. Uh, this guy is just uh, completely desperate, completely out of control, and just uh, using any means necessary uh, to avoid uh, being taken into custody here at this point. Well, Mark, yeah, and, I mean, one of the crazy things is that we've seen him uh, on the freeways. We've also seen him on side streets, and we had earlier video uh, showing this guy he, who was almost penned uh, where he wasn't going to be able to go in any direction. Thanks, there were Levin. other vehicles in front of him than CHP and uh, a, a couple of San Gabriel police officers behind him. And he aggressively, in front of everyone, just did a U-turn, uh, oh, rammed okay. uh, the police on officer. Wow. Whoa, 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 he's out of control, out of control. Five slowing, five slowing. Okay. Okay. So, Mark, right this here. Is where right here. Right here, guys. A little dangerous. Okay. Hang Warning. on, guys. Hang on. If need be, if this thing goes south here, we're going to pull out to a wider shot here. But for now, we're going to kind of hold this shot right here. This guy may be disabled here. It looks like he exited on Pioneer, fishtailed, spun around, and now his uh, his back end is facing that sound wall. I don't know that the CHP actually has eyes on him. I don't know, but you can see just to the top left of the screen, the CHP is definitely on the on-ramp here. Now, we do have a pretty good vantage point here. If he uh, decides to move or gets out of the driver, uh, driver door or anything on the driver, side, uh, we're going to have a pretty good vantage point here, but 
depending on what we see here, guys, we may need to pull out of the shot and uh, not uh, not air that potentially here. So uh, just kind of bear with us here. We're going to do the best we can to give you the best coverage possible. Sky 5 HD was first over this pursuit uh, coming out of San Gabriel here. And pursuit in. And JT, I don't know if they know yet how many people are in that vehicle. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, you can see that right see rear passenger opening. door opening up there, guys. Uncertain if the, the, the suspect could not get out of the driver's door, maybe climbed in the back seat, or there's more than one suspect. We're going to watch him to see if he runs. Uncertain if the CHP can actually see them the way they're deployed. That's probably not really visible, so we're going to try to move just in here. CHP helicopter overhead to see if he's trying to crawl out of that back JT? right door and maybe into that brush area. You okay, can see there, there he is. is. There you is. could see a person. Uh, trying to, he's, now he's uh, crouching. Looks like he's wearing a black T-shirt, jeans, and we're, we're trying to see his hands here. Use extreme vision. He does vision. have his hands we out, We want to see his JT. hands. Is he has like his hands out. It does not appear good. as if there's a weapon. However, it looked as if the there car. were multiple people in the vehicle. He got back into couldn't the car. Tell, couldn't tell Philip and, Les, uh, Philip and uh, Ellen and uh, Leslie if that was a possible uh, female uh, or a male. It was, he was wearing a black, he or she was wearing a black shirt and had his skull and crossbones on it. Uh, looked like they had dark jeans on. Uh, it didn't like. I didn't really like that posture. There's the driver's door opening up right now. Well, Again, now we're going we, to see if it's here. the same person, see? because there, JT. It looked like the back door opened, and I had seen movement in the front seat. And yeah. clearly, that's not a possibility for a person to be in two places at once. I'm not positive. Neither can the officers be positive. But what troubling moments to see the person get out of the car and then get back in. Bruce Thomas, if you're still with us, what does that do to officers who are trying to secure this location? Movement in the car through no, the sunroof, no but the officers are oh. going to make sure they have plenty of personnel there, safe the area, flood the area, so if it does turn into a foot bail, oh, they can flood. maintain visual the contact and take them into custody. But yeah. in this case, what you have right now is someone that is not willing to give themselves up. We have okay, someone Bruce, running on. through the bushes right now. Uh, looks to be a male. Um, mm. crawled out the window instead of opening the door. Now, so we don't know if there's still a person in the car. What we've seen is is that person okay, that okay. appears to be similar to the one that we watched get out of the car. You have officers that are pursuing there. Somebody will still be back at the car, the SUV, to secure that just in case there is somebody in there because they, it does not, we don't know if there was one or two or how many people were in that car. Okay, you know, guys, if you're, if you're with me, the suspect is behind that tree. We saw him run. Mm -hmm. the, air, uh, the helicopter overhead advised the officers where he was and what he was doing. They did deploy a canine into that area. There is a canine underneath that tree. We're going to push in, Jamie. They are making contact with the suspect. Unless he hopped that wall, which is, remains to be seen, it appears that they're making contact with the suspect right now with the canine. He is being taken into custody. We're being told underneath that tree, so we will see him come out here shortly. Can, and uncertain if the canine actually made contact with the suspect or not, but they had that dog out of the car immediately. He tried doing the okie doke, right? So he tried crawling out that back window again. You can be assured right now that officers, a, a clearance team is clearing the car right now. Yeah, that's a good angle right there, Jason. As we continue in, you can see the suspect right up against that wall. We're going to use extreme vision to show you him being taken into custody. It does not appear he or she, uh, it is a male wearing that black t-shirt. Hold right here, Jason. This is good. Blue jeans. They're searching him for weapons. He seems to be erratic, mm -hmm. but he tried doing the old okie dokie, getting out that right rear door where the officers couldn't see him, but you can be rested. You can rest assured that air, that air uh, asset, the helicopter, saw him get out that window, saw him crawl, and saw him run. He was he was doing the old scoot across the ground, trying to get through that brush and try to get in the clear. But that didn't that didn't work out. Obviously, watch your exposure, Jamie, as they take him into custody here and walking him back to the car. CHP has cleared the car, or is in the process of clearing the car to make sure there's no additional suspects in it. Yeah, do we know that? Do we know that information yet? If there's anybody in that car. Well, the, we're gonna as soon as we're gonna walk him back here. We're gonna maybe move back to where we were, Jason. We're gonna see if that car has been cleared. We we'll, can tell by the pull out a little bit, Jamie. We can see that car off to the left there. Yeah, they're standing around that car. They're not in a tactical stance, so more than likely that car has been cleared. So that was that one suspect, Philip, j jumping hmm. around in that car. Right. Maybe Amazing. he couldn't get out of that driver's door because it was a uh, it was up against that dirt and that brush there. But turn perhaps other people that were sideswiped and they have their suspect in custody. And you can see, I uh, want to say thank you, JT Alpa. I want to thank CHP for talking with us on the phone. Bruce Thomas for joining us. Ellen Leva, Leslie Lopez, all of us here as they have taken this man into custody. The pursuit has ended. And Sierra Lund from CHP as well. CHP, Sierra Lund, we are going to return you to the CHU, which is already in progress.